<laughs> we were talking about the issue though with Udemy is that their email marketing, and this is separate from sending your own to your own list, but sending promo announcements on Udemy, the conversion is terrible compared to that standard conversion because we were talking about how like I have over 100,000 students, over 150 actually thousand students now in my courses. I don't know how many have opted out of my my uh, course emails, but there was a session where uh, I believe Dinesh through of of Udemy said about 25% opt out. About 20. It was it wasn't about 20. So that would still mean that my promo announcement should go to 110,000 people. But my latest course launches, I may be getting like a 0.1% conversion. And so that is a little bit, uh, I don't know, interesting. I don't know, Miguel, do you have any thoughts about sending your emails, traffic to your Udemy courses yeah. or how to use promo announcements? Yeah, so the that that is a big concern when, when I found out about you having such a big audience that the, the, the conversion rate is so low, right? And so I actually talked to Dinesh and I said, it would be awesome because if one of the beautiful things about owning, owning your own email list is that you have access to, to those key metrics, you know, the open rate and then, you know, the click through rate. Those, those two key metrics are very, very important to see if your messages are actually reaching your audience and, and, and to see if they're actually people are interested in, in those messages. Right now, it's, it's a black box. You send a, you send a message to, hundred thousand people and you have no idea how many people are opening them you don't know if they're actually reacting well to it or if they if, what is the unsubscribe rate so they're working on it and they're devoting some some resources to to giving giving us those numbers eventually so that's great uh but it, yeah it, it's, it'd be awesome to understand really how many people are un, un, unsubscribing when you send a message what i think happens is that you guys have created so many courses that you've done so many launches. I basically never really contacted my, so I have nine courses and I really only launched to maybe the last three. The other ones were just mm -hmm. organic because I started very early. And so what happens is that my list was not burned, was not used almost. So that's why my conversions were so, so high. But when you have 50 courses, you send so many emails, plus all the emails that they were already receiving from Udemy every week that I think the subscribe rate is huge. The, the people just stop opening those emails, right? Yeah. And so, and that is really one of the disadvantages of not owning those those email lists, right? And that's why it's so important to now build your own email list. At the number one priority should be for only all, all, all online instructors, and then you can redirect that traffic wherever you want. Yeah, that is that is tricky because every email has the Udemy stamp on it, or every email comes from Udemy. So yeah. the average student is being bombarded by all the different courses, all the different instructors sending, even though we only get two promotional emails a month, but multiplied by however many courses they're taking, that's a lot of emails they're getting. Um, so I could imagine that over time in general, there's gonna be an atrophying of the conversion rate just because of that. Um, now, I don't know if it would make it any better if we had our own, you know, our own access to the students from the conversion standpoint, from the, Analytics, I totally agree. I think it's awesome. We need that analytics. Uh, like Aweber gives me open rates and you know allows me to resend to people that didn't open the email and things like that. So, um, so it would be great if Udemy's email server worked more like a traditional email service autoresponder. So this is yeah one of the things. Uh, if once you start building your email list, n nurturing that email list, really knowing and understanding what it takes to keep people happy and engaged. I mean, they, they gave you some trust to join your email list. Now it's up to you to make sure that you're providing value, right? Mm -hmm. We are not taught as now marketers of our own courses on Udemy, what is the best way of communicating with our students to be, to nurture that relationship. Plus we are also limited in the how much we can communicate to our students. I think twice a month is actually pretty good. It's not, it's not a yeah. problem, right? Uh, it's about, People are like, uh, I don't know, like, what should I write? What is the best thing I can do in order to make sure that people are actually getting value? Maybe us are in the game uh, being long enough that we understand what it takes to engage people. But for new instructors, they have this opportunity to send messages and they're like, 
What should I say? Uh, <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Of course, if you start saying bye, 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 people are going to be like, uh, no, I subscribe and subscribe. You have to deliver value and, and nurture that relationship. And it will be nice one before you send the email or something. I'm sure they're working on it so that you have some tips on what are the best strategies to make sure you don't burn your existing audience. Yeah. Yeah. And even though we all, I think all four of us know what we should do, implementing that is also hard because I think about how typically, yeah, you want to send maybe three, four educational messages for every promo message that you send. And we have the ability to do that on Udemy, but <laughs> I don't take advantage of that for all of my courses at all. But if I was sending four messages of just real good educational free content, I bet my promo messages would do do better. And that's something that it's just like if I had more time or if I maybe focus more on that, that's what I would do. But it's it's hard to do that when when all I am doing right now is creating courses and then I sell the course, create another course, sell the course. So, well, I think yeah, I don't know. I think you're doing it right, Phil. Yeah, you're very <laughs> right. At the end, there's going to be a disadvantage because that audience that you've built, uh, we've built on Udemy is a shared audience. It's not your own. That's the big difference. When you have your own email list, that is your email list. When you're sending emails to all Udemy students, that's a shared audience. So you don't have that same type of ownership over it, right? So you cannot expect the same results, basically. 